All right, so we're going to be uh, doing this engine build here on the 74. And uh, what I want to do is kind of go through a walkthrough on the parts we're going to use. Um, and so you guys, if you guys were looking at doing one of these, you could figure it out. Um, maybe help you guide you through the stuff we're getting. Uh, we got the crankshaft here from AA uh, or from Carcraft. It's an AA crankshaft. I mean, I think most of those are made by the same people. Um, from what we can tell, um, this is a 4340. You know, if you get the 4340, I there are a few other suppliers that are like thousands and thousands of dollars that are not the same. But most of the ones in that, you know, price range, I think, come from the same people. Um, and they, I think they all go through AA. So, anyway, uh, we got 74 crank. We got a stock 1600 crank, uh, or stock uh, magnesium case. Now, the thing that's cool about this magnesium case, guys, is this is the good case. So, there's a lot of different ones. This is an AS41 German case. And if you see here... It has this all blocked off here in the back um, where they have this is this is the area that's prone to cracks and this one's all got the it's all blocked instead of it's a block casting instead of being welded some guys weld the back of the case on that side um, so it ended up that with that case if you guys watch the teardown video of the 1835 uh, at the end we had this engine tore down and the center main was pretty shiny here um so we but we did tighten it down and it did check out went to the machine shop he's like no nah, this case is great ended up being a really good case so it's only 20 right now that's the first line bore this has ever seen uh the uh actual uh thrust cut has never been done so it's it's never been thrust cut so it's really a good case so this is about as good as you can get for magnesium. Uh, this is the, I, I think that maybe the, the AF fuel injection may be a little bit better or the, uh, uh, yeah, the AF, I'm not sure. It all is, it's all preference from there. When they have, when it has um, that, this part blocked out, that's when you start to get to the good cases for Volkswagen. So we really have a really good one. Uh, and again, it's still magnesium. It's not as strong as the aluminum, but this is going to be a really good, strong, long-lasting build. The only thing we didn't do to this is some guys take the center main, and uh, uh, if it was a larger stroker engine, I would definitely do it. The center main, and they'll have it uh, shuffle pinned. Now the aluminum cases, they come all shuffle pinned. All of the, uh, all of the. Uh, all the main shafts are all, the main caps are all shuffle pinned on those. So at first we were deciding uh, whether we were going to go 92 thick wall. If you look at these, look at how thick these walls are on these cylinders. Uh, we're, we're not going to run this one to that. We're going to use the 90 and a half AA pistons and cylinders. We're going to use these for something else coming up. These are Molle. Uh, they've been cleaned. We ran them through the very carefully ran them through the sandblaster that they're kind of dull we'll clean them up and shine them up again um well you could do that if you were going to do one of these builds you could actually go to this and go to a 1968 really nice strong engine um just ideas here's the uh 90 and a half you can see the difference look at the barrel here and look at the barrel there on the 92 um since we have heads for the for these that's why we're going with these uh, it, otherwise, I would have to cut the heads that I already have. I already have heads right here that are cut for 90 and a half. So uh, that's why we're going to go, go with the 90 and a half. Uh, if we did the others, we'd have to go to the 94 opening, and uh, we don't we don't have heads for that. We'd have to I had to just buy the heads, but I want to go ahead and use these because they're good ones. They're ported. If you see here, they're ported out. Really nice done. We did this years ago, <laughs> and. Uh, you know, it, it, we really think that this is going to be a nice combination. It has stock valves in it. Uh, we do have the single high rev springs. We are going to get some new valves for this as well. We were checking out the valves right here, and they're a little weak as far as um, things go. They're kind of beat up. If you see right here, that's from not running lash caps. 
and stuff like that. Um, if you run lash caps and stuff like that, you're not going to have your valves get beat up. Uh, somebody was asking about running a performance cam and if it is, it's going to make your engine la not last as long. If you do everything right, you do valve geometry right, and you put on lash caps and you, uh, or you can change the, the, you know, from the stock style here to the, what's that? They have the solo foot adjusters or the, uh, or the elephant adjusters for like the 911s. If you use those, you know, and you run single high rev springs, you, you're pretty much going to last as long as you have a stock cam. So a lot of people were wondering about that in one of the videos. Is it going to last if I put a performance cam in? Yes, if you do it right. So just keep that in mind. And, and, and again, this is the very top end. This could be changed. Let's say down the road, you wouldn't have to split your case again to fix your heads. So if your heads went out at some point, early because you didn't spend the money you didn't have the money or whatever to do it right um you could always change that later and upgrade those heads or change them or do a valve job or whatever without you know doing the complete rebuild so these should be the stock rank length rod um and they're already clearanced you could take stock rods if you really wanted to you, you could take stock rods and machine them down to clearance um, but then you're going to have to weigh them. You're going to have to make sure that they're, you know, done right, which is a lot of work. You know, these are, I think at Carcraft about a buck 20, you know, it's just like, Hey, just buy the new ones. These work pretty good. Um, but the thing you'll always find on these is when you go to put your bearings in, there's almost always a little bit of machining, a little bit off on these. And you might have to correct it by sanding your bearing just a little bit. We'll show you that later if we have that problem happen. You did see it on the 2007 engine. Um, so that's good that you saw that we had to do that on that engine. That's very common with these. Uh, these are chromoly um, AA rods. So here we go. Here's the box. Got chromoly AA rods. We're running stock Volkswagen valve covers with the uh, breather kit. Whenever you go too large on your engine or high revving engine you need to have them set up for a breather kit keep that in mind that's how we do it uh, these are ratio rockers we got here um, these are 1.25 to 1 they work really well with this web 86 cam that we have um, it depends on which cam you go with whether what you want to run the rockers uh, you could actually just run an angle 110 and you end up with almost the same same lift and duration as this one with the with the ratio rockers this is just maybe just a little bit less lift doing the web 86 so I, I think it's a little bit easier on the engine it's not as hard on the valves getting beat up but you know again you know it, it's still not bad you know the Engel 110 does work a lot of guys been using it for years and years we got the Shattuck uh, oil pump this is a 26 millimeter stock size for the late model um, you can run the 30 if you want, um, but when you do the oil galleys the way that we do by making sure that the port matching is done on the oil galleys, um, it's really not that necessary. Uh, we're finding that the oil pressure we're getting from these is just fine, adequate. As long as you're not running ridiculous high RPMs, then you need to do crazy more stuff. So, uh, you know, if you're up in the six, seven, eight thousand RPMs, you know, then you have to really be conscientious about oil pressure. Um, we're running the stock stretch push rods. Um, I like these better than the ones with the spring loaded. A little bit, they seem to work better. Uh, they handle the heat better. Um, you, know, the, you know, the other ones, sometimes the O-rings can get um, rotten from the heat. So keep that in mind. That's another idea. Uh, we're running silver line bearings on the, on the, on the uh, camshaft and silver line on the mains. But on this engine, we were able to get Klobenschmidt for the rods, which I like to run the Klobenschmidt rods. Here's the Klobenschmidts. They're a little heavier, a little bit better quality, um, but they were just out of them for the 2007 engine. So the Klobenschmidt's worth it, I think, for the rods if you can get them. Uh, they, you know, there's really, I would say Silverline's good enough. I mean, you can run the Silverline bearings pretty good. Uh, the Melee ones, eh, I'm not so big on. I wouldn't run those on anything. Maybe a stock engine or something that I'm not really, really worried about. Probably would have ran those on that other engine I built. 
if we would have had them laying around. But since I was buying them, I thought, well, I'll just buy the silver line. So we got the MP uh, pump cover with the for the uh, full flow, brand new, a brand new, uh, brand new filter, doghouse style. Uh, we get a brand new one of these for the filter, for the I mean for not to the filter for the cooler. Um, a lot of used parts. We got the uh, uh, light and flywheel, eight dowel. Really important, 8 dowel. When you start going in any performance engine, always go 8 dowel. And that's what I always do. Brand new springs. I'll show you the old ones we took off. Uh, they're they're kind of bananaed out. They've been running a little while. This this car I got abused when I, I, I ran the crap out of this thing. Look at that spring. <laughs> so we went ahead and bought some brand new springs for it. Um, they're kind of, if you see that, um, you know, when you take apart your valve train and they look like that, it's like, well, you know, may want to just put some new springs in there. So, so we didn't show this in the last video, but uh, we're running on this one, Exceedy, uh, 1,700 pound pressure plate. Not that we really need it, but why not? I get a good price on them. We're running the stock throwout bearing and the uh, Exceedy, uh, what are these called? Dakin disc. disc. And these are made in Japan. Uh, so it should say made in Japan somewhere. Ooh, there it is. And they're a little stronger than the stock one with the springs. Uh, you know, when you get a bigger engine, it, it's, it's always a good idea to put, I put this in the 2007. Um, in all of our bigger engines, we run these, in, unless you're getting to crazy racing stuff. This thing works even good on the track. A lot of guys run these um, on the smaller engines on the track, and they hold up pretty well. So, so the intakes, the reason why we're liking to run these heads is these intakes are already port matched to those heads. So, uh, we may do a little more cleanup here. I did this back years ago. So um, we're going to do that. We got the intake. Uh, if you look here, I actually rib ported this. And what that does is help the, the fuel and air mix together as it goes in. So we're hoping that's going to help us a little more with power. And we're going to run the Weber Progressive. We call them, the old school guys call it Holly Weber. The new school guys say Weber Progressive carburetor. We're going to run on this. So we're going for like a good street. Uh, engine we're gonna put it in the we're gonna put it in the mini house this one here uh, the it's got all the people mover in it and it, it, it the engine that's in it is 1776 this engine is actually there's nothing wrong with it other than the belt is a piece of crap I can look at that one's pretty bad <laughs> it's been slipping for a while because the pitted it was really pitted here and that helps to wear out the belt really quickly if you've got an old engine and you've got a pitted pulley um, that usually will be a death to that to the belt pretty quickly eventually it kind of smooths it out I was hoping it was going to shine that out enough and then I was going to change the belt but I haven't done it yet but yeah this engine is is not bad that's in here 1776 big cam single port um, it does pull the load okay but you know hey why not we're doing engines so we figured let's do another one we had a good case uh, and uh, we decided to just go ahead and up this engine, put a little more power in here. We we'll kind of do a before and after um, drive on this thing, just like the uh, blue car. If you guys have watched that, and you know, so stay tuned. Watch the whole build. There's going to be a lot of stuff. You're going to learn some new things. Uh, we're going to learn some new things. Every, you know, I build new engines. I build engines. You know, I built engines here over the years, and sometimes we even learn stuff new as we're doing it. So learn with us. Check it out. Let's see what's happening. Well, that's it for our parts laid out. Um, I'm really excited about this case. I was didn't know that this case was going to be that good until I got it to the machine shop. And, you know, I was it was just dirty. And while the video was running last time, I never really got a chance to look at it. When I'm videotaping, it's really hard for me to look at things and, and look at condition and stuff. It's it, I, All I can tell you guys is a lot of people think, oh, wow, it's so easy to shoot a video. It's so much harder than it seems. Uh, and 
you know, when I was get this one, when we were taking this one apart, I was just shooting the video, more interested in the video, and I didn't really get a chance to look at the case. And after the video was done, we started looking at the case, and we're going, you know, this is actually, it's a German AS41. It's it's a good case, and uh, it's actually in really good shape other than the center main. We just weren't sure about that center main, and we tightened it up, and it came together, and we got it apart, and we looked at it again, we went, hey, you know what? Took it to the machine shop, and I was like, this is a really good case. This is going to build a really nice engine. So we're really happy about that. Uh, got a lot of parts here. A few bucks in this one. Uh, the last one cost me quite a bit, the 2007. The other one was uh, very, very cheap, the 16 single, which is a great running engine, by the way. Um, really surprised me when I got in it and drove it. Chris drove it, and he goes, oh, my God, you guys. He goes, he goes wait till you drive this car. You're going to be tripping. It is it, it moves out really nice. So anyway, hope these engine videos help you guys figure out how to do yours. I mean, we're not going to, we can't give you, we're not trying to do a step-by-step -step to show you exactly everything to do. You're going to have to get your manual out. You're going to have to read. You're going to have to go in the Samba and figure out some of this stuff. But hopefully having a visual aid to see how somebody else does it kind of gives you guys uh some sort of a, a you know a helping hand to build your engine because uh, these things cost me a lot of money to do. I don't really need an engine for that van. The engine in that van's fine, but I'm doing it because it helps everybody um, try and figure out their way through this stuff. And why not? I, I figured you know I've got the carburetor. I've got, you know I've got the the engine parts here. I had to buy a lot of stuff, but it's it'll be kind of fun to drive something a little bit faster. I, I didn't. When I built the van originally, I wasn't planning on going there with this engine. I wasn't trying to put a big engine in it. I kind of wanted it to look original um, when you open the hood. And now I'm kind of like, you know what? I don't really care if it looks original. I figured why not just make it go a little faster and have some fun building another engine since we had so much fun doing the last one. All right, so I'll talk to you guys on the next portion of this video. We're going to be doing the build. And stay tuned, and we'll see you in that section. Make sure you make your comments, make lots of comments on the video. It does help the video get noticed more and uh, your participation is very well appreciated. Thank you.